We're going to finish out this week by looking at the binomial theorem. And one thing I do want to point out is that we didn't really go into a lot of detail with combinations and permutations, and we're not going to go into a ton of detail with the binomial theorem either. So this is more of an introduction to counting. Obviously, the class of combinatorics is all about counting, and so it would be taking these foundations that we're learning about now and going much, much deeper into these topics. But for now, again, this is just a good introduction to each of these topics. So this is the binomial theorem. We'll start by looking at a binomial expansion. So this is just straight up algebra, which might be a relief <laughs> to some of us. So I'm saying, what if I wanted you to multiply this out? And we're just going to do this old school just to see what happens. So I'm wanting to take 3x plus 2 to the third power. So I'm going to multiply to get 9x squared, and then I would get plus 6x plus 6x, so that's plus 12x, and then plus 4. And I'm going to take that times 3x plus 2. And so I'm going to, again, just keep foiling. So I would get 27x to the third, and then this would give me 18x squared, and this, I'm going to go ahead and write it out because otherwise I might make a mental mistake. 18x squared and then 12 times 3 would be 36x squared. And then 12x times 2 is 24x. And then 4 times 3x is 12x. And 4 times 2 is 8. And so if I simplify all of this, I have 27x to the third. I'm combining these together to get 54x squared. I'm combining these together to get 36x, and then I have 8. So that wasn't super horrible, and it's something we know how to do from long, long ago. But what if I said, hey, I want to know what the coefficient is, and remember coefficient's like what's the number in front, of the term containing x to the 62, in the expansion of this to the 100th power. Well, I don't really feel like multiplying it all out. And so we have to have a better strategy for finding the 27 or the 54 or the 36 or the 8. So thank God we have the binomial theorem because the binomial theorem does just that. It essentially helps us to expand our binomial without having to actually foil and then foil and then foil and keep doing that over and over and over. So what we have here is we said we have the expansion of a, and it's called a binomial theorem because again we've got two terms, x and y, and it could be 2x plus 7y or it could be that y is just a constant. It really doesn't matter. It's the same pattern. Essentially what we're saying is we have the summation as j goes from 0 to n of n choose j, so this is called a binomial coefficient, and that's really the goal here is to get those coefficients, and then x to the n minus j, y to the j. And so that might not make sense to you. Here I've expanded it out for you a little bit, but to me it just makes more sense when I look at an actual example. So this one says, let's take x plus y to the fourth power. What would the binomial expansion be using this binomial theorem? Well, it tells me that, again, I've got 4, because it's to the 4th, and I'm starting at j is 0, so 4 choose 0, and then I'm taking x to the 4 minus 0, which is 4, and y is to the 0 power, so y to the 0. Now, typically, of course, I'm not going to write y to the 0. I'm doing it now just so you understand what's happening. Then the next term is 4 choose 1, because I'm just going to increase. So as j goes from 0 to n, so from 0 to 4, I'm going to keep going until I get to 4. x is to the 4 minus 1, which is 3. y is to the 1. And then 4 choose 2, we can see the pattern here. x squared, y squared. 4 choose 3, x1, y3 and 4 choose 4, x0, y4. Now, of course, as I said before, 
I'm probably not going to write this one and I'm probably not going to write this one in the future because we already know what those are. But how does this really help us? Because these four choose zeros are things that we already know how to do. Four choose zero is the same as before when I said four C zero or C four comma zero. All of those things are the same. And do I already know how to find that? That tells me to take four factorial over zero factorial four minus zero factorial. And that ends up with four factorial over four factorial, which is just one. So this coefficient is one. And I keep doing that for each of these. So four choose one is four. 4 choose 2 is 6, 4 choose 3 is 4, 4 choose 4 is 1. And so what I have just found is that my answer to my expansion here is 1 x to the fourth, so I didn't even have to write the 1, but it's 1 x to the fourth power, and then 4 x to the third y to the first, and then 6 x squared y squared plus 4 x y cubed plus, again, I'm not going to write the 1, I'm not going to write the x to the 0, so it's just y to the 4th. So I'm able to do the expansion of that without actually having to do any of the foiling. So let's go back to my original question that I didn't want to have to foil out by hand, what if I asked for the coefficient of the term containing x to the 62 of 3x plus 2 to the 100? So the first thing I should think about is, again, and I've rewritten this um, binomial theorem for you, but it's okay to write this as the summation. And in fact, I encourage you to, because to me that helps it make sense when I'm trying to find a specific term. This tells me that I'm finding the summation as j goes from 0 to 100 of 100 choose j, and again that j is that value that is going to change, and then it's going to be instead of just x to the uh, n minus j, it's going to be 3x to the n minus j, so 100 minus j because n is 100 obviously, and then instead of just y to the j, I don't actually have a y, it's just 2, and it's 2 to the j. So this is how I would rewrite it using the binomial theorem as a summation. So what did that do for me? Well, I'm trying to find the coefficient where um, x has a coefficient of 62. And so I want to say that 100 minus j has to be 62. How do I know that? Because I want x to have an exponent of 62, and this is the term with x on it. So 100 minus j must be 62, so j must be 38. Again, now I'm going to take what I know here, and I'm going to use j of 38 to help me find the solution. So this tells me that the coefficient for x to the 62nd is 100 choose j, so 100 choose 68, 3x to the 100 minus j, which was 62, because that's what I wanted, right, 62, and 2 to the j, which is 38. So that's going to be my solution, and now I just have to do the math. Like, I already have it set up correctly. This tells me I'm taking 100 factorial over 38 factorial, 62 factorial, and then this is obviously 3 to the 62nd, and this is 2 to the 38. And you might be asking, hold on, what happened to x? Do I really care about x? Well, I know that when I'm done, this is the number 
in front of x to the 62, but I'm really just looking for the coefficient. So I don't need to keep that x to the 62 on there. I'm just finding the coefficient. Now, could I actually go ahead and compute this solution? I could, but this is going to be astronomical. I mean, even just finding this value is my calculator is not going to compute it because it's so many numbers that it just doesn't make sense. So again, as I had stated before, quite often in combinatorics, we just leave our answer in this kind of format. And so what would be the coefficient? It would be just this part right here. This would be my solution to that question. The last thing I want to talk to you about this week is Pascal's identity and Pascal's triangle, which are obviously related. And Pascal's identity says if n and k are positive integers with n greater than or equal to k, then n plus 1 choose k is equal to n choose k minus 1 plus n choose k. And again, this is just an identity that you're going to use literally all of the time in combinatorics. We're going to use it. You'll need to know it. Um, but for now, again, it's just a nice introduction. And I've included the proof here so you can kind of see or understand why this identity works. So we're going to say let t be a set where the number of elements in the set of t is n plus 1. So we have n plus 1 elements. And a is in the set t and s is t minus the element a. So essentially we're saying there are n plus 1 choose k subsets of t that contain k elements. And each of those subsets either, so this is equal to, either contains a with k minus 1 other elements, or it doesn't contain a and therefore there's k elements in there. So that's just a way to show that the two sides are equal to one another. So why does this matter? Well, because Pascal's triangle is based on that identity. And Pascal's triangle, if you can see, this is just 0 choose 0, and then 1 choose 0, and then 1 choose 1, and then 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1, 2 choose 2. These are the rows of Pascal's triangle. Well, what does that do for me? Pascal's triangle is, if you'll remember, we worked through x plus y to the fourth, and we found the coefficients. We, we did all of this using the binomial theorem. And we said that was x to the fourth plus 4x to the third y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy um, cubed plus y to the fourth. So we just did this together a little while ago. So Pascal's triangle says, hey, those numbers, 1 and 4 and 6 and 4 and 1, can be found in this row of Pascal's triangle, 1 and 4 and 6 and 4 and 1. So why does Pascal's identity matter then? Where does that come from? Well, Pascal's identity says, if you've got two consecutive elements, you can add those together to get the next value of your Pascal's triangle. So 3 plus 3 is 6, and 1 plus 3 is 4, and you get the idea. And I can make the next row as well. This would be 1, 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then 1. And so this would be the next row of Pascal's triangle. So we can see how that might be nice if I wanted to take x plus y to the fifth, then I can easily say, well, that must be 1x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth y plus 10x to the third y squared plus 10x squared y to the third plus 5xy to the fourth plus y to the fifth. And I didn't have to do any work. I just looked at Pascal's triangle and really just cheated using Pascal's identity. So that is where Pascal's triangle comes in very helpful.